All right, this video today is for my investor people, talking about a 1031 tax deferred exchange. When you sell an investment property on real estate, you're responsible for paying your capital gains tax on the amount of money that you, from what you bought it for to what you sold it for. That difference, if there is a gain, you have to pay a capital gains tax. Unless you decide to reinvest that money into another real estate product. And I say product because it can be land, it can be an apartment building, it can be a single family residential, it can be a commercial building. There's a lot of different things you can exchange into, but they have to be real property. And there's really six rules to doing a 1031 exchange properly. So let's go through those today. First of all, it has to be the same taxpayer. So whoever is selling the property has to be the one to buy the property, it has to be the same name on the tax returns from the sell the property to the buy of the property. So you couldn't sell in one entity's name and then buy it in another entity's name and have a tax deferred exchange. Oh, and by the way, a tax deferred exchange means that you are deferring the capital gains tax to a later date. You could keep deferring, keep deferring, keep deferring if you follow these rules. And that gives you another you know, 10 to 20%, depending on what the capital gains tax is at that particular time to reinvest. And that's the reason they're letting you do this is because they want you to become, to keep investing in real estate instead of cashing out and then not providing new real estate for people to rent or lease from you. So rule number two, property identification. You must identify the property within 45 days of the close of the first property. Now what that means is you can identify up to three properties and then only close on one or the 200% rule, you can identify four or more properties, but you cannot go more than 200% in identification of the property that you sold. So if you sold a property for 100,000, you couldn't identify more properties than 200,000. There are a little bit of trickiness to that rule, so if you decide to do this, get a hold of me and we can talk about that a little bit more. Replacement property. You must close on the replacement property within 180 days of the close on the first property. So 180 days to actually close on something. Trading up. Now this is the one that gets a lot of people. You must use all the money that you get from the sale to trade them to another property, including debt and equity. So if you had a debt and equity of $100,000 on that original property, you must reinvest $100,000 debt and equity into the second one to defer all the taxes. It's not just the amount of money that you have after you pay off the debt, debt and equity. The fifth one is hold time. The government doesn't want you to be flipping properties. There's no exact rule to the hold time, but if they see that you bought a property, fixed it up, and then flipped it, they're not gonna allow a 1031 tax for exchange. It is for properties that you hold long term. And the sixth one is related parties. Very simple, means you can't buy a property from your cousin or from your brother or your sister to use in your tax deferred exchange. That is it. If you have any more questions about 1031 tax deferred exchange, you can contact us at 704-360-0667. I hope this has been helpful. Check us out at carolinarealtyworld.com if you want more videos like this one. So when you sell an investment property, you are to pay your purchase price and your sell price, you have to pay a property gains tax. And some people don't want to actually pay property gains, property gains, and just go buy a car or put it towards other debt, something else. You actually have to pay your capital, 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 capital. All right, let's talk about a 1031 tax deferred exchange.